Okay, so this is section 9.3. <clears throat> this is called separable differential equations, and it is exactly what it says it is. First of all, it's a differential equation, so it's got a derivative in it. And the separable part is because we can actually separate the differentials, which is the dy and the dx in the form of dy over dx. We can separate those in order to be able to actually come up with um, the original function. <clears throat> to take the uh, antiderivatives, basically. Okay, so let's talk a little bit, first of all, about what separable differential equations does. Um, <clears throat> what you will see is that this is going to be our way to basically undo the um, implicit derivatives. So this is going to be our antiderivative technique for... Um, for implicit derivatives. <clears throat> so to solve a differential equation in the form of that has dy over dx equals, and you see on the right hand side over here, it's some function of x, g of x, over some function of y. Could be flipped, just has to be able to be something where the function of x and the function of y can be algebraically separated on either side of the equal sign. So basically through multiplication and division. So the first thing you want to do is you want to rewrite the equation separating the variables. As you can see in number one, all of the y's are on the left, all of the x's are on the right. Then you can integrate or take antiderivatives of both sides, either way you want to look at it. And then solve, if possible, um, for the results of step two for the uh, variable y. Sometimes it's not always possible to easily solve for y, so you leave it in some kind of an implicit form. But for the most part, the ones that we do we will be able to solve for y. <clears throat> so, first thing we need to be able to do is we need to be able to figure out is something separable? So, <clears throat> this is where the Leibniz notation, the dy over dx, is going to be much more useful than using y prime or f prime or something like that. Um, and that's because you can now separate the variable. So, when, you, when it comes down to it, when we start doing the problems, if you see a y prime, replace it with dy over dx. It will help in order to go ahead and um, see whether you can actually take the antiderivatives or not. All right, question A, is dy over dx equals to xy separable? And the answer should be relatively obvious that it is because everything on the right hand side is being multiplied there are no additions or subtractions which would keep us from moving all of one variable to one side and all of the other variable to the other side the biggest key is the dy and the dx must not be in the denominator okay it doesn't matter which side you put them on but they cannot be in the denominator so the easiest thing to do is to move that dx out of the denominator first in a case like this <clears throat> And so our answer to A is, is yes, by the way. If it's not yes, then it's going to be a very short problem for us to do. Um, so it's yes, we can separate it. So let's go ahead and show how this works. We're going to move the dx first. So we're going to get dy equals 2xy dx. We're just going to multiply dx on both sides so that we can get it out of there. <clears throat> then we're going to go ahead and get all the y's on the left-hand side now with the dy, since both dy and dx are not in the denominator. It makes sense to move my y from the right to the left, so we'll divide both sides by y, and we get that 1 over y dy equals 2x dx. And you could have written the left-hand side as dy over y. I prefer to keep the differential, the dx, and the dy out of the numerator, it just makes it a little bit easier to see what happens from here. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and take antiderivatives. We're gonna integrate both sides, however it is that you wanna look at that. <clears throat> and I can do that because now I have a function of y dy and a function of x dx on opposite sides. Remember, this is still an algebraic property. Whatever you do to the left, you do to the right to keep the balance, so we're gonna integrate both sides. On the left-hand side, we get the natural log of the absolute value of y and technically there is some kind of a constant so plus c right because it's a uh, indefinite integral <clears throat> on the right hand side we're also going to get let's see antiderivative of 2x will be x squared plus some other constant you don't want to use the same c so we're going to 
make it so that those are C1 and C2 so that we know that they are different constants or potentially different constants. Now, here's the thing. And for the most part, we're not actually going to write a plus C on both sides of the equation here. We're just going to leave the plus C typically on the side where the X is or the independent variable, if it's T or whatever else it is, because um, you're going to solve for your dependent variable. Um, in this case, it'll be Y. If I were to take C2 and I were to subtract both sides with C1, well, that's just going to give me some kind of a constant on the right, C2, minus another constant on the right, C1. Well, that ultimately just gives us some other constant. So when we subtract the C1 on both sides, really all we get is another constant on the right. We don't have to call it C3. From here, we're just going to say that the right side is x squared plus C. And that's where we're going to leave it. So this is the line right here we're probably going to jump to for the most part. We're not usually going to write the constant on both sides when we take the antiderivative, just knowing we'll combine both constants on one side and we'll call it C, whatever that constant is. All right, so now how do we solve for Y? Well, the way to get the Y out of the argument of the natural log is to exponentiate. Basically, that means you are going to take E to be the base of both sides. It's a process called exponentiation. <clears throat> so E raised to the natural log of y, absolute value of Y is just going to give us Y. We can drop the absolute value on that one at this point because <clears throat> E raised to any number is going to give you a positive value. So we don't need the absolute value. And then the right side is literally just E to the X squared plus C. <clears throat> All right, this next property is going to come up relatively frequently, so we're going to write this down over here to the side. e to the x squared plus c, we're basically going to reverse the multiplication property where if you take two common bases, multiply them together, you add the exponents. We're going to take that backwards from here, and we're going to say that this is e to the x squared times e to the c. <clears throat> so hopefully you can see that the right side is two common bases, E, being multiplied. Then you would add the exponents and you would get the left side. We just took that process backwards. And you might ask yourself, why would I do that? Well, E itself is a constant. And E raised to a constant is just going to be, you guessed it, another constant. So we're going to call this little E to the C out here a big C. Hard to tell the difference between the two because you know little c and big c pretty much look the same other than the size but that's just going to be a big constant so what we ultimately get here is a capital c e to the x squared <clears throat> so that is what we get when we solve the differential equation y equals c e to the x squared <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so that is the first problem. That is how you basically go about the process of separating um, a differential equation in this form and solving it for its original function. Y equals C e to the x squared. All right, let's move on to example two. <clears throat> so now we've got y prime equals sine of x over cosine of y. So the first thing I see is that we've got a y prime. Let's change that to dy over dx equals sine of x over cosine y. <clears throat> Again, the first thought should be move the dx over to the right, which we'll do. And hopefully you can see that we can kind of do all this in one step. We're also going to multiply both sides by cosine of y, so we'll move it to the left. So we should end up with cosine y dy equals sine of x dx. <clears throat> okay, the variables are separated, all the x is on the right, the y is on the left. We can now integrate or anti take antiderivatives of both sides. Antiderivative of cosine of y is going to be sine of y. Going back to our trig derivatives. I don't need the plus c, I'm going to put that on the right hand side. Antiderivative of sine of x will be negative cosine of x, and here's where we'll put our plus c. <clears throat> All right, now we need to solve this for y. 
Unfortunately, there is no nice, easy way to do this. To get the y out of the argument of sine, we're basically going to have to use the inverse sine. So we will take the inverse sine of the sine of y equals the inverse sine of the whole thing on the right, negative cosine x plus c. And in doing so, the inverse sine and the sine, <clears throat> since they are composite functions of inverses, we'll just leave you with the argument, which is y equals the inverse sine of negative cosine x plus c. Not a really pretty answer there, but that is the antiderivative that is solving the differential equation for y. Okay, let's move down here to example three. Uh, this will, by, by the way, this will be multiple videos um, to get through all the examples. We'll probably do two more on this particular video, and then we will um, switch to a second video. All right, example three, find the particular solution for the initial condition y of zero equals two for the equation e to the x squared, y, y prime plus x equals zero. One of the things that you should notice is that we are given an initial condition. Okay, that is important. That is telling us that when x is zero, y is two, <clears throat> what this does is it eliminates the family of functions that we would normally get from taking into antiderivatives, and it gives us one particular solution, or in general, this is a way to find C. So we will not now not have C in our problem anymore. We'll actually have a numeric value because it is one specific function. All right, in our differential equation, once again, it's a differential equation because we have a Y prime, we have a derivative. We need to change that derivative into dy over dx. So we have e to the x squared y dy over dx plus x equals zero. <clears throat> and now the question is, well, wait a minute, I see a plus in there. Is this thing actually separable? Well, yes, it is. We can subtract the x on both sides. And then we can divide uh, e to the x squared to the right. And then the last thing I have to do is multiply both sides by dx. And voila, we have separated the variables. So now we're in a position that we can take antiderivatives integrate. <clears throat> so the left side on this in this case is going to be by far the easier one. That's just going to be one half, whoops, one half y squared. The right side, well, it looks like we are going to have to do some kind of a u substitution in order to take the antiderivative of this. The u part is going to be x squared. So du will be 2x dx, making dx du over 2x. All right, so using our, um, <clears throat> our u substitution here, we're still going to have negative x on top. This now becomes e to the u in the denominator, and dx is du over 2x. Okay, the x is here. We'll divide away, which is really nice. Kind of has to happen. <clears throat> and then I want to rewrite this on the right-hand side. First of all, I see a constant of a 2 in the denominator. also have a negative on top. Let's pull the negative 1 half out to the front as we can for constants. I'm not going to leave the du in the numerator. I'm going to put it off to the side. But that leaves 1 over e to the u, which is the same thing as e to the negative u. I just like to rewrite it in that form because I think it makes it easier to see how to take the antiderivative from here. But now we are in a form that we can take the antiderivative and the antiderivative, let's see, the antiderivative of e to the negative u is really the same as its derivative, which will end up being negative e to the negative u. But that extra negative is going to go out in front and make that negative one half a positive. Don't forget your plus c. Let's bring down the 1 half y squared. That hasn't gone anywhere. just haven't had to do anything with it yet. 
still have to replace the u, so don't forget to do that part. We get 1 half y squared equals 1 half e to the negative x squared plus c. All right, <clears throat> now that we've actually taken the antiderivative, we now have a way to find c. We were given initial conditions in the original problem. So we're going to go ahead and personally, I like to use those right away. Um, I guess there could be times when you don't necessarily want to, depending on the function. But for the most part, I think using the, the initial conditions right away is better. doesn't have to be. Technically, you can just about do it whenever. Um, let's see. What were the initial conditions? When x is 0, y is 2. So we're going to plug 0 in for x and 2 for y. If we plug a 2 in for y, we're going to get 1 half 2 squared equals... 1 half, plugging in a 0 for x just gives me 0, negative 0 technically, but that's still just 0, <clears throat> plus c. All right, so don't make the silly mistake that a lot of us make. e to the 0 is 1, not 0. So the right side becomes 1 half plus c. And the left side, let's see, it's 2 squared. That's 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we are now left with 2 equals 1 half plus c. Subtracting 1 half on both sides, we get that c equals 3 halves. So we now have our c value. What we're going to do is we're going to take that c value, and we are going to go back up to where we first found the equation. Oops, not that one. Let's go with that one, because that's the one where we plugged x back in. And we're going to plug the 3 halves back in for c. So now what we get over here in orange is 1 half y squared equals 1 half e to the negative x squared plus 3 halves. Okay, that is our equation. Now we can actually solve this thing for y. Looks like that won't be terribly difficult. Um, we're going to have to multiply everything through by 2, I think would probably be the easiest, which will leave us with y squared equals e to the negative x squared plus 3. <clears throat> and then we do have to actually solve for y, so we'll take the square root on both sides. And because we are taking the square root, don't forget we have to use the plus or minus of the square root of the entire right side. And that is our original equation of y. So we have solved the differential equation. All right, this is going to be a slightly longer video than I wanted, but the next one won't take too terribly long. So we'll go ahead and finish this one up, hopefully in about 20 minutes or so. We'll see. All right, x dy over dx equals negative y squared. Once again, this is something we can separate. Let's move the um, dx by multiplying it on both sides. And the problem is the variables are mixed up here. So all I need to divide by negative y squared, and I need to divide by x. So let's do that. We'll get negative 1 over y squared dy equals 1 over x dx. And now we are in a position where we can take the antiderivatives. Let's integrate. All right, on the right side, that's actually going to be a natural log of the absolute value of x. Don't forget the plus c. On the left side, that is the same as <clears throat> negative y to the negative 2 power. So the antiderivative raised the power by 1. We get y to the negative 1. Dividing it by negative 1 gets rid of the negative sign. So that's the same as 1 over y. That's the antiderivative of the left side of the equation. So that's 1 over y. Okay, we do have an initial condition, so let's use that to find c. So y is one-third. One over one-third is the same as one divided by one-third. So multiplying by the reciprocal should give us three. And then the natural log of one is zero, so that means that c equals three. So we plug that back in. One over y equals the natural log absolute value of x plus three. And then basically, we need to reciprocate both sides. Take the reciprocal of both sides of the equation to get y out of the denominator. So taking the reciprocal puts 1 over the entire right-hand side. 
and that is our solution. Just under 20 minutes, wonderful, let's come back with another video.